Hi there, I'm Jeff Hastings and welcome once again to SLJ.com. Uh, in the November 2009 issue of School Library Journal, in my test drive column, I wrote about this netbook. It's the Toshiba Mini NB205-N230. And from now on, can I just call it the Toshiba Mini? Um, because that's a mouthful. Toshiba Mini Netbook, um, and this one retails for $379.99. Now, I chose this Toshiba Mini for a reason. I chose it because in many ways, in terms of its guts anyway, it is the typical netbook today. If you look at its specs, it has an Intel Atom processor running at about 1.6 gigahertz, and it has a gig of RAM installed. So right off the shelf, it's very, very typical. And I wanted that because um, last month, late last month on October 22nd, you probably know this, Windows 7 was released. So it's out there now. And I started using Windows 7 last winter when it was released in beta and used it all the way up till July when um, the beta expired. And I used it on, a, on an old laptop with what is really a, a pretty slow processor by today's standards. And you know what? It ran really well. I was impressed. So since then, I've really been eager to see how Windows 7 would made up with a netbook. So I'm going to tell you what my impressions were of that. This Toshiba netbook, like many others being released, runs Windows 7 Starter. I'm going to tell you about that, but first, come in closer because I want to show you um, some of the things I liked about this netbook, which is typical in many ways and pretty special in others, and then at least about one thing I didn't like so much. Let me tell you what I liked about this netbook. First of all, regular form factor netbook, very small, very light, but you have this keyboard that's nearly full size. That's nice for keyboarding. Equally nice for navigation, you have this touchpad. Can you see it? This is a three inch touchpad. Um, just a, this is probably as big as what you get on most notebook PCs. So both navigation and keyboarding are very comfortable for a netbook, especially. Three USB ports, you know, that's not, that's not atypical. What may be more atypical is the fact that when you plug in an outboard device into any of these USB ports, when the device goes to sleep, it continues to charge any outboard devices that are plugged in. So if you're charging up your MP3 player on one of these USB ports or your digital camera, um, they continue to charge even when the unit itself um, goes into sleep mode. Really nice. Now here's a big one. Look at the battery on the back. It looks really typical, right? You might assume, oh, this is a six cell battery. It gives me five or six hours of usage. Well, this is actually is a six cell battery, but it's reputed anyway to get about nine hours use typically out of a single charge. So that's a pretty high efficiency battery. And you know what? I have no reason to doubt it. I've been using it and haven't had to charge it yet. I'm using it for some pretty long periods of time. Also in this machine, something to like is that I typically like netbooks that have solid state drives because I feel I can really bash them around. This one doesn't. It has a 250 gigabyte hard drive, but it's a protected hard drive in that it's sensitive to motion. So if it moves up and down or any way for that matter, the drive parks. And actually there's a notification box that pops up that will tell you that the drive is parked um, I turned it off because it parked so frequently that I found it a little annoying after a while. I don't find the protection itself annoying though. I think it's a good thing to have in a netbook. You want that durability to be there. It's nice to have a protected hard drive and I appreciate the, the space too, 250 gigabytes. What do I dislike about the machine? Not much. What I do not appreciate too much is this very tiny and rather tinny speaker. I don't even know if you can see it. It's a down-firing monaural speaker in the back, so the sound's pretty weak, which may not be a problem for educational applications, but if you want stereo sound out of this thing, you're gonna have to jack into the headset jack um, with powered speakers and or headsets themselves.
All right, so this netbook shipped with Windows 7 Starter, and I want to talk about that. First of all, what is Windows 7 Starter? Well, it's an iteration of Windows 7 that's really, really kind of stripped down um, for the netbook experience, um, which gives you options right up front to upgrade. You don't get much, actually, but the operating system itself, but you get a really, really kind of Spartan version of the operating system. So the operating system itself doesn't bring as much to the table as a Windows 7 user might expect in that, you know, those glossy, they call them arrow effects. They're these glassy effects um, that really come into play, especially when you're using multiple windows. They won't be there in this edition, um, nor will a lot of accessories. You, you can't even, for example, change the desktop wallpaper on this one. So it's a pretty stripped down version of Windows 7. That being said, even as stripped down as it is, I was kind of disappointed with it. I was disappointed with the speed, for instance, and opening applications, the boot up time I felt for a netbook. I want a quick boot up. It was going, the boot ups were around a minute and a half or more in most cases. Working with multiple windows was very sluggish at times. I just felt a little disappointed that um, Windows 7 Starter wasn't a little bit more nimble on netbooks. Um, you know, I installed this little tachometer widget over here in the corner, and what it does is it's really telling me um, how much of my, um, how, how hard my process is working at any given time, and how much of my available RAM I'm using at any given time. And I was kind of surprised because on both counts, I was in the red even when doing pretty routine stuff. So. That tells me too that, that Windows 7 is using a lot of the system resources of a typical netbook setup. Um, there's also something called the Windows Experience Index and you can access it through the control panel. And it's a rating system that the operating system does on the hardware it's running on that kind of predicts how well the operating system is going to run how the quality of your experience on that operating system is going to be. And the index runs from a rating of 1.0 to a rating of 7.9 at the highest. This system, and I'm sure this would be the case for just about any comparable netbook, um, gets a rating of 2.0, so it sounds pretty low, and um, the performance kind of bears that out. My recommendation would be this. First of all, if you're going to run Windows 7, I mean, consider instead of paying for applications, consider running um, OpenOffice as I do on this. Um, I run OpenOffice. Um, though it comes with Internet Explorer, I downloaded Firefox, which is my browser preference. And um, I also downloaded VLC Media Player, which I found works really well on light hardware. Download some open source apps and try those out. But if you are, are bent on running Windows 7, the thing that I'm hearing, I'm hearing that if you want to run it on a netbook, try installing as much extra RAM as you can afford and or as your netbook will accommodate. So we're running this with a gig of RAM that it came with, and adding a second gig of RAM, which I believe it'll accommodate, um, supposedly can make a big difference in the performance of Windows 7, your processor speed notwithstanding. So that's my assessment. Again, a little disappointed. Um, and I hope to test Windows 7, even full-blown Windows 7, on other netbooks and see how they do soon. In the meantime, I'm Jeff Hastings for School Library Journal and SLJ.com, and I hope to see you again next month.